Hello and welcome to Eco Farm. This is episode two, and of course we're on no man's land. Trust everybody's well today, and in the pink of health. In this episode, we're going to get our first livestock, and I suppose there are no surprises in guessing what they are, but uh, you would have to just wait a while to see what transpires. First of all, we're going to start off by liming and um, spreading some muck on our newly ploughed fields, or our newly created fields, I suppose our newly created and ploughed fields if you want to be pedantic. <laughs> In any event, yeah, here we go. So we've got plenty of lime left over from the first fill that we did, so I don't think we'll put a huge dent in that um, liming these fields. Um, we've still got the um, lime spreader on lease. That of course is not subject to having to plant any trees, it's just the cost of, of leasing it, so no problem with that. Right, I don't know whether we'll need to fill it up completely. Of course, you would have noticed that we are in the midst of a thunderstorm, which I'm not too unhappy about. Um, we don't have any really steep uh, fields or fields that have steep slopes so we can spread this and the rain will just help it soak into the into the ground um, pretty much ideal conditions would like the rain a bit the rain a bit um, lighter but um, yeah, it'll work it'll work and hopefully uh, later when we start spreading some muck some manure um, It'll still be around because that'll help with the with the smell, of course. <laughs> well, we don't have any near neighbours, so it's not too much of a problem. Um, Max spreading season, as most rural towns and villages will tell you, comes with its own particular odour. Not everybody likes it. But then again, not everybody hates it either. We'll just speed this up a little bit, get it done. It's only about three passes, but still. And we'll get on and uh, do the other two fields as well. This one's got a little bit of slope at the corner there, but I don't think it'll be too much of a problem in the rain. Certainly it doesn't seem to be too much of a problem with the equipment. This one is also relatively flat, so no problem with that either, I don't think. Yeah, I'm pretty happy with um, the progress so far. Um, I think I did mention in the last episode that we do have some loans available. Um, so we'll, we'll, we'll call into bank at some time and uh, have a chat with them, see what they'll give us. Yep, and as uh, is true to form, I didn't quite have enough lime, <laughs> so I had to just pop back and go and get a little top up, but it's only this small little area that needs to be to be done. I'm sure we've got enough in there. Then I think we should be able to return the lime spreader for now. We will be creating more fields at a later stage. Oh, don't tell me I didn't have enough. In any case, I'm not going to worry too much about that. It's only just a little corner. Rather return this empty, save the line for the next field. Oh, 
I uh, did have a nice message from one of our one of my subscribers um, with regard to the Max spreader and he pointed out something which I should have realized that the Max spreader that I was using in episode one was most probably for um, grapes and olive vines and as soon as he as soon as I read that I said to myself of course of course that's exactly what it's for so in any case I did return it um, so we'll get a different max spreader and I think it'll work out a lot better so we'll use the super flick super fix yeah I think that'll do slightly bigger capacity I don't think we need huge capacity so I don't think we need to put the boards in the top I think I'll just take it just take it as normal we'll get that least and uh, what is the width on this 10 meters so that's yeah it's gonna make short work of those fields as well there we go. Yeah, sometimes when you um, starting new series, you do seem to find that um, you are so focused on what you're doing and working out the rules and the way you're going to play the game that you forget some basics. And I suppose not realizing that that was a Max spreader for for vines um, is a basic mistake, but still, we we've got it sorted out, and uh, we'll uh, we'll spread like on that uh, field that we did on day one as well, or in episode one, it's still month one, um, just so that we can hopefully be fully fertilised. So I'm going to do a double spreading as well. So it'll go a little bit quicker, a little bit slow, no, a little bit quicker, a little bit slower, and we we'll probably have to refill a couple of times. But uh, we should get a hundred percent fertilisation from this one pass, and that's important. Well, it's not important; it's time saving. We don't have to go and do it again. And I don't always like spreading muck. Uh, on product that has grown already although as long as you get a bit of rain it's not normally too much of a problem but I prefer to uh, spread manure before the uh, plants are actually growing or the crop is actually growing whether that's um, a uh, general practice or whether that is uh, scientific fact it's just the way I I feel and the way I um, do things as such yeah good stuff good stuff looking like a good solid spread of um, of manure the width is pretty good As I said, a bit slower than spreading the lime. There should only be one pass, one more pass after this, and then this field will be done. Yeah, so going forward, um, as I said, we're going to be looking at. Um, putting our first livestock in we'll do that as soon as we finish this I'm quite excited about it um, there are a couple of um, well, not really issues but we're going to have to buy, buy and feed but I want to get um, a lot of the basic operations of the of the farm going as quickly as possible um, seeing as we, that we do have access 
to some loans and we'll utilize those over the next few episodes and months to um, to enhance the farm we'll get the farm going as quickly as possible and likewise with the livestock um, I'm going to be buying in some of the feed and that to start with um, it's probably not a hundred percent eco-friendly that way in terms of um, we're not always sure of the crop miles or the seed miles or whatever you're buying the um, the feed miles is what I'm trying to say um, oh, so yeah um, but um, yeah I, th I think I'm just weighing that up a li about a little bit about getting going so that we can get um, up to supplying the um, the town um, with as much variation of crop as quickly as possible so that's my thinking on that um, let me know if you think I should pay a penalty for doing that pop it down in the in the um, in the comment section should we plant a few trees for that let me know maybe what we can do is plant a couple of trees around the the actual um, the actual animal pens that we do eventually end up building that's a good idea it'll have to come in some future episodes because I have pre-recorded some of the gameplay already um, so yeah but let me know what you think about that should we do that Sh should we need should we plant a couple of trees around each of the pens by way of uh, compensating for the product and the feed that we buy in the more I think about it I think that's the way we're gonna go Let's have a quick check. Yep, that's looking good. 100% fertilized. That's that field will be um, pretty much sorted out after this now. That's where I wanted to get to was just to see if we could correct the early mistake on this field just speed things up a little bit get the other fields done shouldn't take too long now not sure exactly what we're going to plant yet but we'll uh, do that in episode 4 and next episode we'll plant these fields yeah so because of the double application we are having to fill up quite a bit and that's not going to be too much of a problem because we don't have too far to go so we've got as soon as we're having the muck delivered to the to the farm at the moment and of course um, once we get our animal pens going we'll be supplying iron might be a little way down the line before we are fully sufficient on in the poo stakes as we should say spending an inordinate amount of time thinking about poo at the moment <laughs> oh dear in any case that's part of it part of farming life and we wouldn't want it any other way would we fabulous so I think we've got two passes and we'll be done I 
I say, as we drive up here, um, it's probably an, another whole field available to us directly ahead, uh, which um, we can utilize for all oh, many different things. I am thinking about some greenhouses, putting up some greenhouses as well to uh, increase the variation of crops that we can sell. But we'll get to that in the, in the next couple of episodes as well. What else was I thinking about? I haven't gone, I haven't thought a huge amount about um, full-on productions yet for uh, retail products, things like bread, etc. Um, I'll do a bit of investigation on that and see if we can find some smaller bakeries um, rather than the big industrial bakeries. Maybe have one or two smaller bakeries. Um, making different products as such than run when rather big industrial bakery um, churning out lots of CO2. In any event we will have to supply electricity to those as well and then we'll have to decide. I haven't decided yet but I think that we will have to um, think about carbon credits or tree planting However, we balance it out once we get full-on productions going. Because they would be not just using electricity, a lot of them would be creating some sort of effect on the, um, on the atmosphere, be it um, well, I suppose if we're using electric ovens, bakeries and that, not so much. Yeah, we'll have to think about that. If you've got any thoughts on that, give us a... Give us a bit of a, a comment. Let us know your thoughts on whether we should be... Um, compensating for uh, our carbon footprint on productions which ones you think we should which ones you think we don't have to De I definitely think if we're doing things like um, if we consider making things like clothing or um, or some of the heavier production like, um, oh, can't think of something offhand. I said the bakeries, maybe touch and go. But anything that uh, would be, would have an exhaust on the top of it. So a chimney should need to be, in my opinion, there should be some sort of carbon um, compensation. That's what I was looking for, the word I was looking for there. Right, so here we come. Everything has been fertilized now and limed, just ready for planting. But before doing that, I'm going to put up some free range chickens. So we're going to put up quite a big operation because I'm going to. Although this doesn't technically produce manure, I'm going to use the wheelbarrow that we've been using as a delivery mechanism to simulate um, getting uh, manure from chickens. So I think we'll, uh, we'll use this sort of undulations here, or the slight hill to put up, I think we'll do four of these pens. I think they take a uh, 150 chickens each, if I remember correctly. Can't remember, but it's a, it's a fair amount of chickens. We 
just put them together like this it kind of looks like one big pen with a lot of different uh, feeding areas we don't won't chop down the tree we'll leave the tree in there for them to feed around look for worms anything that may drop off the trees Right, there we go. So there's a couple of little dips in there, but I'm not too worried about that. I like the rockiness of it. Oh, it's a bit, it's a bit harsh. I'll smooth that around there. Just oh, there we go. <laughs> oh dear, dear, dear. Oh. <laughs> oh, nice and easy. <laughs> Yeah, so we'll have to do a bit of a minor land, landscaping just to stop us ending up on our side. Luckily nobody was hurt. Yep, a bit of a bit of a bump there. It's, it's difficult to see in the grass, but there's a bit of a, a dip down there as well. So I think we'll just smooth it out. I don't want to landscape it perf perfectly flat. After all, we are building on a hill. So let's get down to some landscaping. Smoothing out of the area. Probably going to cost us a little bit of money. That's fine. Yeah, I think that dip is always going to be there. I just don't want it to be um, that much of a sharp drop that um, vehicles want to tip over or has happened. Spread it out a little bit more and get a bit more smoothness. Yeah, I think it's looking good. I don't want to cut down the grass just yet around there. I want to leave it a bit rough and ready. Yeah, you can see that it I'm not going to bring it down much more and I'm not going to landscape, it's just going to, we're going to have to just deal with that bump every time. Good stuff. Right, so that's the chicken fields. Now we just need chickens and feed. I said we're going to have to buy in feed, so we'll have to pop down to the shop. Oops, that's a bit of a bump there. Not too bad on the sides now. Yep, still quite a big drop there. Just have to take it easy there. It's a bit of a drop there. Yep, that's not too bad. I'm happy with that. Quite happy with that. The chickens will have a nice view of the little minor valley down at the bottom there. 
I'm also thinking, should I have, I'm a bit worried about foxes. Not sure whether I should put fences up or not, just around the whole area. Not, um, I think what I might do is put a couple of sheds and then we'll just uh, make place for the chickens to shelter during the during the night, but we'll do that at a later stage. We'll still do it before we put the chickens in, but... Uh, right, let's get some feed going. I think, first of all, we're going to need to get ourselves a trailer to transport the feed in. So let's have a look and see how much is the feed going to cost us. I don't think it's going to be all that cheap. Wheat. Yeah, that's not cheap. But we're moving forward. This is the important thing. Otherwise we should be just doing arable and uh, not any, um, no sort of diversification to start with. Right, get a trailer. Get the order late um, pellet trailer and we'll we'll connect it up for twelve thousand litres. We've only bought eight thousand litres with a feed but we'll get started with that. And then we'll uh, while we're getting feed supplied to us we'll see if we can make some sort of arrangement with the store to um, deliver to the farm. Maybe put up a little bit of a silo on the farm so that we can draw feed through there. Just pay them for what we use, hopefully. We'll see. We'll speak to them. We'll just get this loaded up. Yeah, so so far we pretty much haven't delivered anything to the town although we have still in our first month of of um, farming so I suppose you wouldn't have really expected to be delivering anything but we're getting there we should within the first three or four months we should start being able to at least deliver crops to to town that can be utilised to produce food as such. I think it might be a while before we actually supplying the retail food, but we certainly will be able to sell, for argument's sake, um, wheat or barley or something like that through to the farm shop. We could on sell it to mills, etc we can get our own stuff going. Right, let's head up to the farm and go and put the chicken feed in. Then I suppose we'll have to start thinking about getting chickens. That'll be a bit of an investment. The chickens are fairly, fairly cheap to start with. Of course we'll be able to well, fairly quickly, within um, by the beginning of next month, we'll be able to supply at least some eggs to the town. And that's the other thing consumable things like eggs, bread, um, will need to be delivered um, regardless of, I won't say regardless of price, because we'll still look to see where we can get the best deal in the town but um, we're not going to be storing eggs until we get the absolute be best price because the eggs would be rotten by then so, <laughs> so whatever's produced in the morning needs to get taken to town when we get um, to greenhouses the same will apply to that as it will to um, any other 
retail consumables, so bread, um, milk, if we do milk, if we, if we, if we can't use cows, we may consider something along the line, maybe goats for milk or sheep, um, but we'll look at that uh, a little bit further down the line. So if we get um, the feed in, we get chickens going, we should, uh, should be able to deliver our first produce to um, to the to the to the village to the town uh, in early May. Right, so let's just get these building cross grids, whatever one wants to call them, taken away. We'll have to just divide up the um, this load of food as best we can between the, f the four troughs. So although we've made it look like one field, it's basically four fields. So the uh, chickens will still need to be that are in each each uh, quarter will still need to be fed from their own troughs. I'm sure. Um, most of you would have picked up on that, but yeah. That's it done. Let's get a bit of division of uh, our food. It's not going to be exact. There we go. We get roughly around about 2,000 litres in each. A little bit more, a little bit less, not too much of a problem. We'll just have to keep up, keep vigilant on the stock levels of the chickens. Well, the f stock levels, the food levels. I'm sure there will be some mistakes made. But until we can, uh, until we're producing our, so our own, we'll need to uh, just be a little bit weary on the cost. That's the last one done. I'm going to park up the trailer. Then I want to look at a uh, perhaps a system for for housing the chickens. Let's get some chickens in first, and then we'll build a house for them. <laughs> I'll build a coop. So I think if we put sixty in each, and. Yeah, yeah, each one takes 150, so we'll have 300, 600 chickens. We've got plenty of place to expand that as well. Because of course we can do, um, can put chickens into other productions again as we, well, again, or, or we can also put into other productions. Um, so we may need more eggs. We'll see how it goes. Just uh, a bit of forethought going on, that's all. Yep, there we go. Relatively cheap to buy them. So that's the next lot. Here they are. Scurrying around the place looking for worms. Let's get this one done. So if we put 60 in there. Um, first production cycle, we should, I oh know they'll produce more, so it'll probably be full by the, um, by the end of the next, um, by the end of the first um, reproduction cycle, um, and then we will just auto-sell any of the, 
additional checks or checks that that um, are produced from then onwards um, until we get going and then of course if we do expand our uh, our free range chicken areas we can just supply from our own from our own stocks so that'll be a good forward sustainable idea and we can rotate rotate them so that um, once we feel that um, the chickens are getting a little bit old not producing as well um, we can sell those on and um, we will have hopefully um, younger stock to to replenish them there we go so that's uh, 60, 120, 240 chickens going at the moment. They should produce a few trays. They won't produce a whole pallet overnight, but they'll produce a few trays. And we'll get those sold in May to the, uh, to the uh, well, to wherever we can get the best deal in town. There will be a few candidates looking for eggs pizzeria, restaurant, farmer's market, supermarket, I think they'll all be looking for eggs. So yeah, not too bad with that. Right, let's look for something that we can simulate a, a coop and then with a bit of imagination we'll just uh, pretend that we'll be putting them into the sheds every night just to protect from predators because as you know the foxes will have the chickens quite quite easily and quite quickly so these shouldn't generate or need any electricity or anything like that so we won't put up any any solar panels not sure if those are solar panels that come with the vehicle with the vehicle <laughs> with the building or whether they are ventilation I think that's probably ventilation so then we put on one on that side and we'll put one adjacent on the other side I don't think we need to put one in every corner put one on this side then that'll be good enough just got to make sure we get one of the staff members to come up every night and uh, before sunset and uh, put the chickens to bed of course it'll also be easier to um, to collect the eggs from a shed rather than having them uh, scattered around the the fields. <laughs> hunt an egg or Easter egg hunt every day. <laughs> oh yeah. Well, in any case, that's that done. I think we'll just put in a few tracks around the edges. We'll put uh, a few more defined roads around the farm, around the fields in um, a future episode just so that it's easy to get around the farm and um, basically we're using the same routes and not just driving willy-nilly through the fields. So generally speaking, between the fields I'm going to leave the grass going wild. As I said, we will build some roads. Um, we will um, occasionally take a... Um, do a bit of um, meadow management and uh, cut areas. Basically, we'll, I think we'll just 
um, sell the grass or maybe make some hay out of it and sell it on. Um, I don't think, unless we do sheep at some stage, haven't thought about that. I need to have a look and see what the what the um, impact sheep have on the um, environment and if they do what compensation we need to do as I said we're definitely not going to be doing cows I don't particularly want to get into the whole debate about cows and methane and all that type of stuff um, but um, yeah for now we're not going to do that just make a track across the front here so that we know where to connect the manure course leaving the meadows generally speaking growing and the trees growing just maintains the well a lot of the ecosystem not everything of course uh, but um, keeps it going keeps passages open for animals to to feel safe um, Travelling across, across the farm, moving across the farm, and keeping the biodiversity up. Just uh, extending the areas slightly, just so that we're not feeling that we have to drive very close to the food areas. We'll just make a bit of a loop around and the bottom coop. We're just putting gravel down so if we um, if we do increase uh, our chicken coops that um, we don't have to dig up any tarmac or anything like that. We're going to try and not use any tarmac and as very little cement as possible on the farm. Use dirt for dirt roads as much as possible. Maybe gravel. But um, yeah, certainly not um, tarmac. Just, just about done and I think that's pretty much where we're going to start wrapping up this episode do hope you've enjoyed it um, drop me a line in the comments if you think there's any considerations that I'm missing out on in terms of uh, carbon footprints etc thank you so much for watching if you've enjoyed it please like and subscribe and we'll catch you in the next one. Cheerio.